Hi everyone, this is Mr. D. Bartolo here. Today is the 24th. I hope you guys are doing well. I am doing well. I am suffering with a huge case of cabin fever. I am super excited to be teaching you guys. Um, no new updates um, as of yet. I think I will have more updates for you guys tomorrow. Um, I do have updates in terms of the EOC for English 2, uh, because we're all English 2 here. Um, your teachers will tell you, I'll also tell you now. Um, so obviously it's canceled. I just wanted to let you know that um, the EOC is contingent upon you passing English 2. So if you passed English 2, you passed the EOC. If you did not pass English 2, you have to take the EOC next year, which I think seems pretty reasonable. So if you did not pass my class, for example, low-key kind of happy about that. But um, just want to let you guys know that information because I just found that out like a half hour ago. So I wanted to relay that to you. So if you passed, you're good. If you didn't pass, Maybe you should have did the work. What do I know? Just a teacher. Okay. So, on that cheerful note, I hope you guys are doing okay. If you have any questions, please email me. You guys know my email. Um, let me give you the tiny URL in case you can't access the slides because... Sure. It is tinyurl.com. T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot C-O-M. Cool, we're good there. The backslash and then the code is T-K-Q-C-3-J-H. All lowercase, everyone. All lowercase. So I'll go over that one more time. T-K-Q-C-3-J, which is lowercase, and H. So you should be good there. My handwriting's bad, but it's not that bad. So, find the presentation. In the presentation, you will find the Google Form on the first slide. It is on the first slide of the PowerPoint. So that's where all your answers, your do nows, etc., will go. Let me go over what I want, what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start with the do meow. We're gonna watch a short clip of Mean Girls, which will make sense for the lesson. Um, we will look at a picture of me, and then we will um, learn about how to inference as we read, and then we will I will give you homework, and that is all in the Google Form. So, I always like teaching this lesson because I get to um, poke a little bit of fun at you guys because you guys are all teens. So, let's go to slide number two, which is the do now. So, we got a picture. What I'm going to ask you to do, because you're all judgy little teenagers and you judge all the time, probably judging me right now, meanies, I want you to write a paragraph about what you think is going on in this photo. All I want you to do, it doesn't have to be in a format, all I want you to do is use your eyes, see the picture, cool, think about what you think is going on, and type it out in the Google Form. There's no questions, because I have no comments. So, um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You can pause me now. Okay, so I'm assuming that you paused me and now I'm unpaused. Cool. Hope that photo was interesting. Do you guys want to know what it is?
I actually deleted the link where I, I had what was going on. I'll tell you what's going on in this photo. So what is going on? Pretty sure it's New York. That's not it. I'm so sorry, everyone. You know? Got it, okay. So, these scuba divers spent um, a day bobbing along Central Park Lake. So that's in New York, in New York City. I knew it was Central Park, I did know that. Okay, um, they went down um, to do some studying in the lake. So they wanted to pick, this was a, a press release to show New Yorkers to clean up after themselves because I don't know how many of you have been to New York, but I am from New York and I will tell you that New York is sometimes very dirty. Um, they wanted to clean up the lake, so they actually went down, scuba dived, and picked up all the trash out of the bottom of the lake. Um, they found cans, bottles, obviously, but they also found trash baskets. Trash baskets? Can't speak. They found a bicycle and a baby stroller, which is slightly concerning. So they were cleaning up the bottom of the lake. Now you know. New York can sometimes be gross. So, um, back to the lesson. So we're on slide three. What I want you to do is watch this clip um, from Mean Girls. I don't know how many of you have seen Mean Girls, but I've seen Mean Girls because my girlfriend makes me watch it constantly. It is a good movie, however. So we're gonna watch a short clip, and as I want, as I'm gonna make you watch a minute of this clip. Don't pause it after a minute, because the more it goes on, the more we kind of lose what we're trying to do here. So watch the clip. After a minute, come back to this, and then we'll talk. So you can pause me now, you can watch the clip. So I'm assuming that you are unpausing me now. Um, my question to you is, what do you think about Gretchen? What is she really mad about? Was she really irked by... Um, Julius Caesar, does she really think that Julius Caesar was bad? Or was it something else? If you're saying that it's something else, how do you know this? You, teens, are all very judgmental. And you don't mean to be. Everyone's judgmental, but you teens are especially judgy. At least my peak babies definitely are judgy towards me. I don't know why they would be. But... You guys are all judging all the time. I'm going to have you judge me now because like my peak babies, I'm sure that the rest of you are all very, very judgy. So um, if you go to slide number four, I'm going to be vulnerable with you guys. I'm going to allow you to do whatever you want here. Make it appropriate. My God. So slide number four. What do you think is going on in this photo? Make up a story. This will go in your Google form right underneath uh, your do now. So there's a photo of me. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing exactly. Um, but I want you to be as creative as possible. I will tell you um, what is actually happening at the end of the YouTube video. Don't fast forward to the end. Just be in the lesson. Shouldn't have to say that. Okay, so you make up a story about me. What am I doing in this photo? I will tell you at the end. You can pause me now. Okay, we're back. Hello. I'm excited to see um, what you have done here. What photos do you have here? 
or excuse me, what stories you have about this photo. And I will let you know at the end. So, skip to slide five. So, an inference is, these are your notes. What do you judge, think, plus what you've read? I'm sure you've heard this before. So, what you judge plus what you read. So, what you think plus what you've read, you form an idea. So, we're going to do a few together, or together, but I'm going to think out loud about these sentences. My cat threw up after she ate the expired food. So, let's draw my cat. She always has a bleph. That's a pretty good cat, huh? And here she is throwing up. Cool. Now, what does that say about my cat? Hmm. If I'm thinking, I think my cat might be pretty dumb. Because if food is expired, it tends to smell bad. So I think my cat could be dumb. But also... What does it say about me as an owner of the cat? Huh. Well, if I'm feeding my cat expired food, do you think I'm a best cat owner? You can think a lot about, it says a lot about me if I'm feeding my cat expired food and not realizing it. So maybe I'm cruel, maybe, which I am, maybe I'm not fit to be an owner of a cat, which is true, right? Do you see what I'm saying? As I'm reading the sentence, I'm thinking out loud and I'm making judgments about me and the cat. I could also make a judgment about my girlfriend. Why would she keep me as a cruel cat owner? Just an idea. So let's do to, let's do to the next one. Miss Pop stinks. Shout out to the Hampton kids. You guys should know that. Miss Pop stinks. Hmm. Okay, well, let's draw it out. So here's Miss Pop. And she's got some stink coming off of her. Okay, cool. Well, that's my girlfriend. And hmm, what did it say about her if she stinks? Not clean, okay. Also, it says a lot about people around her, too. If Miss Pop stinks and nobody tells her, then maybe people around her um, aren't as truthful as they should be, right? So if like I'm around her all day, because we, we have cabin fever, we're living together, Maybe that says that I'm not being 100% truthful with her because I'm not telling her that she stinks. See, we're thinking about what we've read. That's all that inferencing is. Uh, let's do one more. Also, she doesn't stink. So, any of you Hampton kids say that. I'm coming for you. Okay. I ain't an entire wheel of cheese because I can't leave my house. Wow, that's true though, huh? Okay, so let's draw it out. So here's me. Let's give myself some muscles here too because clearly. And let's do a wheel of cheese. I don't know how to draw a wheel of cheese, but I'll draw an arrow to my mouth. I'm really bad at drawing. Let's pretend that I can do an entire wheel of cheese because I can't leave my house. Now, what are you thinking as you read that? Okay, he ate an entire wheel of cheese because he can't leave his house. What does that make me? Probably bored, maybe. You're eating out of boredom. That's possible. So maybe Mr. DiBartolo is bored. So he's eating cheese. Maybe Mr. DiBartolo is a pig and can't control himself around cheese. Also true. I'm thinking 
as I'm reading. And that is what good readers do. As they are reading, they're thinking, oh, that's messed up. That character is weird. Why would he or she do that? That is what I want you guys to do. I want you to be thinking about what you are reading and I want you to make judgments. That's all inferencing is. It's a really fancy word. It doesn't need to be. It's a fancy word for judgment. You teens are all judgy. You're judging me. You wrote a story judging me. What I want you to do is take that judgy attitude that you all have and put it into your reading. I want you to judge the characters, the situations as you read and make judgments on them. Make inferences about them. Fancy word. Doesn't need to be. So that is my thing. That is my like little guided practice on inferencing. Now I'm going to have you guys practice and then I'm going to give you homework. So if you skip to the next slide, slide number six. So, um, let me release this two seconds here. Cool. Okay, slide number six. I want you to inference, judge what judge what you've read. In the Google form, you're going to write a paragraph about this short story. The short story is for sale, baby shoes, never worn. Okay. I want you to write a paragraph about what you can infer, judge, about this short story. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do that. And again, this is in the Google Form. If you need the Google Form link again, it's in the um, first slide of the presentation. So you guys have 10 minutes. You can pause me now. So pause me. Beep, 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 pop. Okay, we are back. I hope that wasn't too heavy. That is kind of a heavy short story. We had a debate in my grad school class whether that really is a short story or not. I think it is a short story because it has a lot to it. Um, but you can make a lot of judgments based off that. So the last portion of our lesson. I'm going to have you read four short excerpts and answer a multiple choice question. All of this is just basically inferencing and judging. All I want you to do is just think about the characters, about the situation, about everything that you read and make judgments off of them. So what I like to do personally, as I read, um, let's do it like this. Let's pretend this is a paragraph of a story that I'm reading. Cool. Just go with me here. So I'm reading. Huh. Oh. He's mean to the cat. Oh, the cat was on the couch. No training. Right? Okay. And all of these little annotations are all judgments that I'm making based off the text, whatever, the fake text. So as you read, Maybe make comments in the Google form that you can kind of annotate on. I think that would be helpful. If you want, you can also annotate on a separate sheet of paper, and then you can use that to answer the multiple choice questions in the Google form. So that will be in the Google form. Um, the link uh, to the homework is on slide seven. So the last slide, 
Oh, and what I was doing during that picture was it was actually St. Patrick's Day, and me and my friends who went to art school in Brooklyn um, were on our way from New Jersey to Brooklyn to go visit a few of his other friends um, during St. Patrick's Day, and that photo was actually taken right outside Madison Square Garden. Um, some dude just kind of came up to me and started talking to me, but I was really cold, so my arms were crossed like that. That was pretty much all that was happening. <sighs> anyway, thank you guys so much. Um, everything's in the uh, presentation. I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Um, I love you guys. Be well. Be safe. Have a good one. Bye-bye.